where Siri is. Let's go get the lassie. I'll do that, but I have another job for you. You need to set out for Kaer Morhen. That's where I'll take Siri. The Wild Hunt will attack soon afterwards. Could use you at our side. You'll have me and my axe. <laughs> what is going on, my fellow Witchers and future Netrunners? It is the Blind Prophet, and I've been playing a lot of The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt as of late, and the more and more I play, the more and more I've been getting excited for the very anticipated Cyberpunk 2077, and as they are both CD Projekt Red games, I wanted to talk about things in The Witcher I would like to see return in some form in 2077, so without further hesitation, let's get right into this one. Varied Enemy Types so first to start off this extensive list is one of my favorite elements from playing The Witcher, which is the vast array of enemy types. There's so many games that just throw mindless humans at you that you can easily parry and destroy, but not The Witcher. Not only are the humans different, with some having various weapons such as swords, spears, shields, or bows, but there are a crazy amount of monsters and animals. When the game was first coming out, all I ever saw in the promotional material was Geralt going against the Griffin, and I thought it looked really cool, but then I also thought, if that's all you're gonna do, it would be really boring. But I was wrong. Extremely wrong. I have been so pleasantly blown away by how many different enemy types or bosses there are. Obviously you run into your drowners or wolves a lot, but it's not enough to feel cumbersome, and every single enemy type requires a different approach according to their strengths and weaknesses, which isn't anything new in gaming, but in the climate we're at right now, it's refreshing. My favorite game of 2018 was obviously Red Dead Redemption 2, and although Roach may not be able to do some Tokyo Drifts, Drift? What do you mean, Drift? Red Dead Redemption's combat can feel very unfulfilling at times when you just continue to flick shot every single bandit, Pinkerton, O'Driscoll, or cop in San Denis. So I guess my point is that I hope Cyberpunk 2077 has just as an extensive enemy roster and combat approach, which I'm sure it will, especially since there seems to be stealth in 2077 that wasn't an element in The Witcher. Haggling. If you know me in real life, you would know I'm a fan of haggling. Something instilled in my family, and I was introduced to extensively by my grandfather, but never did I expect to haggle in a video game. In certain scenarios, when helping someone get rid of a monster that is a nuisance to them, you can haggle for the reward that they give you, and particularly have to pay attention to their annoyance level, which is freaking awesome. I'm glad it's only in certain scenarios as well, because that's how it is in real life. Sometimes you have opportunities to haggle, and sometimes you don't. But I would love to see this be an element in Cyberpunk 2077, especially since it seems to be you're working in a crime underworld, and I can see so many opportunities where maybe it's a dialogue option to haggle, or you can maybe haggle after the fact based on if the job was harder than they told you or informed you. Just something like this where haggling returns in this world could be so cool. Another note on this which was cool when playing The Witcher was when I came to an agreed upon amount, the person I haggled with said they didn't have the coin then, but if I returned a week later, they would give me double. So again, something that would be awesome to see implemented in 2077. Trophies. Something really small but really rewarding is after defeating a sort of boss enemy type, Geralt will decapitate the beast and hang its head on Roach as a trophy. Not only does it provide a nice aesthetic, but it provides certain boosts to the character as well, depending on which one is hanging from the saddle. But since there's no monsters, as far as we know, this one is a little harder to imagine being in 2077, especially since we don't have a trusty steed to hang any heads or appendages from, but maybe we could receive our trophies in the form of a patch or adornment for our jacket. CDPR has already said that the samurai jacket that has become synonymous with the game will have a sort of street cred system, which sounds a lot like how a few of the trophies worked in The Witcher 3. And we can already see several accessories like the Welcome to Pacifica Paradise patch and a pin on the samurai jacket. Another thought is after reading the cyberpunk sci-fi book Coco Takes a Holiday by Karen Shea, the main protagonist Coco was a part of a group of cybernetically enhanced mercenaries that when engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat, the victor would bite the other's eye out. And something like that would also be really cool, a sort of recognized form of marking an enemy to let someone know you were there. Either way, I'd love to see the return of a trophy system to reward you for killing a high priority or tiered enemy in Cyberpunk 2077. That way, it doesn't feel like we're shooting enemy after enemy. Rewarded for exploration. Speaking of rewards, the amount of times I've been rewarded for exploring The Witcher has also been really satisfying. One instance that blew my mind was when you're trying to charter a ship to get to Skellige, you have to pay the captain of the ship 1,000 coin before you leave. On the way to Skellige, however, you encounter a huge storm while also being pirated, and the ship is destroyed, leaving you to wash up on shore unconscious. If you explore the wreckage, though, you can find the captain hidden behind a piece of the ship, and you can take your coin back. If I had never taken the time to look around, I would have never found that. 
And I hope that this is something we can see in 2077 as well. That same level of reward for truly exploring the world. And maybe it doesn't have to be physical rewards, but maybe Easter eggs or funny things that just make you feel like you're really living inside the world and moving in it. Tough decisions with real outcomes. The last thing I expected when playing The Witcher was how deeply meaningful your decisions can be, and I'm not talking about telltale dialogue decisions that don't have an impact on the story, or decisions that could potentially change how you engage in a situation, like showcased in the demo for 2077, but actual meaningful choices that could lead to the life or death of a certain NPC character you've come to know, or having to choose between who to kill, or let be killed, or do nothing at all, and reap the consequences. Every time I had to make a decision and dealt with the consequences, I asked myself if that was the right thing to do. Did they deserve that? Could another choice have led me to being able to provide more help? I want to see this in Cyberpunk 2077, especially since we'll be criminals of sorts and morality at times could be questioned a lot throughout our story and choices. I also wonder if being that we have the choice to be male or female, if that will open up different opportunities within choices as well, or maybe someone react to a choice we make differently due to our gender. I know that CDPR is really putting a large emphasis on choices as we saw in the demo. I just hope the outcomes can really branch off and affect our stories tremendously to where maybe you and I almost played different story entirely about those cards you got them got the isn't grim card sure here ha! the sea hills are beautiful zed give you much trouble zed's dead whose chopper is this zed's who's zed zed's dead baby zed's dead <laughs> References. So remember when I said the last thing I expected in The Witcher 3 was deeply meaningful decisions? I lied. I lied. I lied. I might have lied. The true last thing I expected was references to Quentin Tarantino's movies. If you aren't familiar with Quentin Tarantino, he's an extremely awesome film director and one of my only living idols left. So please check out some of his movies, especially before his newest Once Upon a Time in Hollywood comes out this summer. Totally looking forward to that. But yeah, there are references to his movies sprinkled all over the world in The Witcher 3. In particular, the first I noticed was when exploring the Bloody Baron's basement area, there are two guards conversing and one says to the other to bring out the gimp. Bring out the gimp. Make the gimp sleep. Well, I guess you'll just have to go wake him up now, won't you? This is clearly a reference to the basement scene in Pulp Fiction, where Marcellus Wallace and Butch are held captive by a pawn shop owner. Clearly, this is someone's favorite scene, because in Novigrad, there is a pawn shop owner named Zed that you are supposed to retrieve a Gwent card from for Zoltan. But Zed is unfortunately killed before you get to him, so when you report this to Zoltan, Geralt tells him, Zed's dead. Which, to those again who aren't familiar with Pulp Fiction, they would not understand this. But I was sitting there like Captain America, that reference. Because this is clearly a nod to when Butch goes to pick up his girlfriend with Zed's chopper he took after effectively leaving him to die at the hands of Marcellus Wallace. So this was just a few of the QT references I found. You might have found references to other fandoms like Game of Thrones or something, which I wouldn't understand as I haven't watched, but I appreciate the developers' willingness to leave parts of themselves in projects like this because you can feel the love. So here's to hoping that continues in Cyberpunk 2077 which I might be stretching on this one, but I might have found a Quentin Tarantino nod in the demo. When V and Jackie are trying to recover Sandra Dorset, Dorset starts to flatline, and the scene plays out similar to the OD scene in Pulp Fiction, where Vincent has to pump an adrenaline needle into Mia Wallace as she's ODing. Which, again, this might be a stretch, but after finding so much Quentin Tarantino in The Witcher, I can't help but see this as a clear nod. Oh, mierda, she's flatlining! V, need to know what's going on. Jackie, air hypo. Get yeah, China. <sighs> Siri. Now, the last thing we need to see in Cyberpunk 2077 is Cirilla Fiona Ellen Rhiannon, better known as Siri. Cirilla is the sort of adopted daughter of Geralt that you spend the most of The Witcher 3 in search of. She is from a line of people who possess a strong magic in their blood called the Elder Blood that allows them to teleport. I found this really cool and interesting because when you play as her, she fights almost like a medieval nightcrawler from the X-Men, and then I realized how much Geralt is kind of like Logan, and then I realized how Geralt in love with a magic sorceress who wields fire, kind of like Jean Grey when she's Dark Phoenix. <laughs> No, but seriously, Ciri's teleportation ability is really cool, however, she can supposedly also teleport through space and time, and when she and Geralt reunite, Cirilla tells him of a world that sounds suspiciously like Cyberpunk 2077's. However, I'm far from the only person to notice this, and Adam Badowski, Cyberpunk 2077's director, was even asked when we should expect to bump into Ciri, and he replied saying he hated that question, and added that they aren't Kingdom Hearts, and they're not joining universes, 
which is very sad to hear because this is what we live for now. Aliens vs Predator, Marvel vs Capcom, Ubisoft's Tom Clancy universe, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like. How can he hate that question? That is an extremely unique opportunity to put a fan favorite character in their next game. And also it seems kind of contradictory when Geralt is in games like Soul Calibur and Monster Hunter. It's clearly something fans want to see with various cosplays of Siri in a cyberpunk style and world. But with all that said guys, what do you think about this list? Are there any I might have not included or just other game elements in general you'd like to see in Cyberpunk 2077? Let me know in the comments down below as I'd love to discuss it with you guys and try to reply to every comment, so let's talk. Also, don't forget to add to the Atlas list, a growing list of games by Atlas Ravenwood that we'd like to play or recommend. Please feel free to add any game or talk about some in the list already, but as always, stay hydrated, let them pass in peace, and Excelsior. You don't know about real loss, because it only occurs when you love something more than you love yourself. I doubt you ever dare to love anybody that much.